Welcome to Bandit's Keep Actual Play. I'm Daniel. We're continuing our OD&D campaign. Now the adventurers hit the field. So in this episode, we're going to still be using the outdoor survival map, but now moving an entire adventuring party from their base camp to a dungeon. Okay, welcome back to the solo OD&D campaign I've been running here. We're moving on to the adventurers finally. So the mapper has made a bunch of maps. I've created some adventuring parties. You can see those previous videos. And what we're going to do now is we're going to assign. So each each f section of this campaign, as I introduce new methods, I will go over them. And then in the future, you know, I won't go through each one. So some of these earlier videos are going to be method heavy. So just bear with me here. So the traveling through the wilderness for OD&D is a little different than outdoor survival, and we'll talk about that. But first, let's get ourselves set up. So I've got my three adventuring parties listed here. I've got my five maps. I have this cool die. It has a little duck inside. Got that from Only Crits. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, and we're going to roll, right? First, I'm going to roll to see which party I'm going to send out to the field first. Six. Okay, so that's going to be the Fangs of Peebluff. The Fangs of Peebluff are getting the first map. I'm going to roll a d6 to see which of the maps they're going to go for. And if I roll a six, I'll just re-roll it. Two. Okay, so this map here. This map here is going to be assigned to the Fangs of Peebluff. And if you note, if you notice here on the map, let's see if I got this here. If you notice what I wrote on here, you can see I've got what the map carries. In the upper corner there, I have effectively the coordinates. So I'm going to set up this uh, outdoor survival, and we'll talk a little bit about the difference between outdoor survival and OD&D, &D, and we'll start doing this. Okay, so I've printed out the effectively the party roster for the Fangs. There's six members plus two camp followers, so we'll put that to the side for now. When they eventually get into the dungeon, I'm going to use this. This is a modified version of basically a sheet that, that was released for AD and D. It allows you to kind of track the party. When I've got a large party, I don't need to be flip, flipping through character sheets constantly. I'm going to make the most important notes on this and when they get into the dungeon. But they probably won't get there right the second, so I haven't filled it out yet. The next thing is, as I mentioned, on here I've got these coordinates. I've got four inches from this side and two inches up is basically where this map is. So let's mark that on the map. Got my little ruler here. So four. Oop. So four is here. Oh, I think I remember where this one was. <laughs> four. Four is this, this set of hexes here. And then two up. I remember this one. This is where I thought I was going to get a lot of uh, treasure. And then we ended up having some bad luck. Okay, so it's like literally right there. Well, that's pretty good, right? That's our destination. However, we're going to do like we've done in the past. And I'm going to roll randomly to see where the party comes in from. I'm just going to go a d4, this side being uh, one. So one, two, three, four. Oops. Three. Okay, so one, two, three. Basically, they're coming on the other side of the map. And then I'm going to go uh, high, low, basically high, low, four. Okay, so they're coming in from up here. Well, they've got a long ways to go. So this is our this is our treasure. That's what they're seeking. They're coming in from up here somewhere. I guess the logical place would not be the woods, so I'll put them up here in the center, and that's where we're going to start our party. So we've got a couple of differences in the way that OD&D handles this versus outdoor survival. Number one, OD&D does not say anything about tracking water or food, nor does the movement change based on how much water and food you have like outdoor survival does. Basically, they're expecting you to have rations. Now, I've got enough money for each of these guys to carry about three weeks worth of rations, which I don't know if it's going to be enough. And what we're going to do here, though, is we're going to say that if they cross an area, if they stop in a hex, not cross, if they stop in a hex that has one of these animals on it, that's going to be a hunting ground, and they're going to be able to roll... Uh, 1d6 times 2, and that's going to be the number of rations they can pick up total, right? So if they roll a 2, then they'll get 4 rations, and there's a big party, so that's not enough for everybody, but they'll be able to restock a little bit that way. Hopefully this won't be an issue. They can stay there as long as they want, because as long as they're there, they're not going to absorb any rations. But, of course, every day you stay in the field is another risk. The other thing I'm not going to do here is I'm not going to do what I was doing with the mapper where there's this like stress mechanic because they're a group of party. They're a group, right? So they're not worried about that. Now, 
In, in OD&D, a, a party of foot travels just three hexes a day. There is a chance that you can get lost, and there are terrain penalties. So we're just going to start moving. We know where we're going. So we're going to kind of just move in the direction that we need to, each day rolling to see if we get lost, and if there's a random encounter. And if there is, then we'll handle evasion and everything else just like before. So here we go, day one. Now, it's important, by the way, I'll also mention this. I'm being very... Uh, meticulous here on tracking dates. I'm actually keeping a calendar because since I have rival parties, we're going to be concerned on who's out in the field and who's not. So it's important for me to track how many days and I will definitely be doing that as we go. So here we go. Let's move this out of the way. So I'm just going to open this up to we're going to open this up here. Now before I do anything, I'm just going to kind of look and make a decision on where I think I want to go. We know that we travel the fastest over the plains. We definitely don't want to go through mountains if we can avoid it. We probably are going to want to regenerate food. So I'm thinking the smartest thing for the, and the I'm definitely not going to want to go through the desert. Oh, and also I will say for the point, like these towns and stuff, they're just not going to be anything for now. I may change that, but uh, for now they're nothing. I might make them towns in the future. In, in OD&D, they're supposed to be castles and towns, but... For this, I'm staying more open wilderness. So I think if I'm going to be clever, I think the smartest move for me to do traveling over the most efficient terrain is going to be to come this way and across. So that's my plan. So here we go. So like anything, we want to be procedural with this. I actually just have a piece of paper off to the side of my pencil over here. I'm just going to keep track of the days. Uh, very simply, I'm just going to make hash marks as they travel, and then we'll calculate it all out. Remember, they got to rest after every si every seventh day, basically. So, day one, they're in the plains. I'm going to roll. They got a four. So, in the plains, I I'm just making one roll here. If they're in the plains, they get lost if they roll a one. There's an encounter if they roll a six. So, nothing. So, one, two, three, and I'll mark a day off. Day two. Two, no, no problem. One, two, three. They're still pretty flush with food, so they're not going to worry about that. Day three, no problem. One, two, three. Day four, no problem. One, two, three. Day five. Ooh, day five, they're going to have an encounter. And the encounter is supposed to be at the end of the day, so it'll be where they stop. One, two, three. So they're still in the plains. So they're possibly going to encounter something in the plains here. Well, they're definitely going to encounter something in the plains. So again, I, I keep saying plains, but the clear. So we're going to roll a d8. Four. Four I li are lycanthropes. Okay, we've encountered lycanthropes before. So we know that there's the four types of lycanthropes. I'm just going to roll that right now. One. Okay, I believe that's werewolf. Yep, werewolves. Okay, so we're encountering werewolves. So let's get our book out and let's figure out. We're still going to try to evade them, obviously. We don't want to encounter a bunch of werewolves and have a big old fight if we can avoid it, especially if there's a lot of them. What's interesting here is in some level, we kind of want fewer because we might actually be able to uh, encounter them and fight them. Number one, let's see if they're in their lair. There's a 15% chance that they're in their lair. See that, right? Yeah, okay. Forty-one, they're not in their lair, okay. And there are from between 2 and 20. Okay, there's 9. So there's one more of them than there are of us. And, of course, Lycanthropes are quite tough. So we do not want to fight them if we can avoid them. So we've got 9, so roughly 50%. So first thing we're going to do is try to... First, we're going to see if we're surprised. This is something I wasn't really doing with the mapper, but maybe I'll bring back. Are we surprised? Oh, we are. But are they surprised? That's important, because if both groups are surprised, then nobody is. They are. Okay, so there's no surprise. Or, I should say, there's a moment of... Oh. Now, we're in the field. 
So this is where, you, where you're gonna you gotta do a little rule interpretation because it does say here you can't evade if, if you're surprised, but I figure if both sides are surprised, then we're gonna count that as no surprise in, in, in the, the way that works. Okay, so now our group is, because remember you gotta count your animals too. We have two mules with us. So our group is actually 10 large, okay? And there is 25 to 60% of them. So there is only a 30% chance of us avoiding them. That's that, that's that. Yep, 30% chance. So there's 30% chance that we can evade them. The good thing is they are not twice as fast as us, so they don't get any kind of advantage, nor will they necessarily follow us if we run. So we're just gonna kind of have to roll and hope for the best. We really don't wanna lose a day if we can avoid it, but it's better than getting into the fight. So I think we're gonna run if we, if we must. Okay, so 30% chance. Can we evade them? Oh my God, 30 exactly. All right, so we evade the werewolves. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do here is, this is, I'm just doing the off to the side. Day five. Avoid. Werewolf. I was writing this for myself. I don't know if I'll use it or not but we know that there was some werewolves and we avoided them. It's not their lair, so it doesn't really matter. So basically, I, I'm, you know, when you're evading things like that, I kind of look at it like they were passing through since it's not their lair. We saw them, we duck under the trees and they kind of moved past us. So that day passes, that's day five. Next day of travel, let's roll to see if we encounter anything. Nope, everything's good. One, two, three, we're gonna stay here in the fields, obviously. We, could, we wouldn't, we, could, we didn't have movement to go in the mountain anyways. Uh, and that was day six. So after six days, you must rest. So on day seven, we, we must rest. So we're going to stay here and rest. We're going to roll again. One, we're lost, but you can't get lost if you're not moving. So we're not going to worry about that. So day seven, and we're pretty much good to go. So what we're probably going to do here is now forest takes, takes two, right? And you can only move three a day. So it's going to basically take us a couple days to get through the forest. And then once we get there, we're going to actually try to stop on this food. Because I think that that makes sense for us to try to refresh. We're not super low yet. We're only one week into it. But, you know, we haven't quite got to the to dungeon yet. So we're going to, uh, we rested. We're good. Now we're going to move again. We're still, we're still in the plane. So we're going to see if we get lost. Now, what's, what happens here is we're going to roll... Actually, since most of the movement is in the forest, I'm going to rule that we're going to roll on the forest chart. Because you could get lost at any point during the day. So in the forest, there's a one or two you're lost. Five or six is an encounter. Two. All right, we get lost in the forest. That means we move in a random direction. Because obviously we'd move into the forest to be lost. We're going to move in a random direction first, and then we can re retrack ourselves. But because of the amount of movement it takes, basically what I'm going to do is tomorrow, I'm just going to move in a random direction. So we didn't have any encounter. So I'm just going to roll to see what direction we move in tomorrow. One. Ugh. Okay, we go off course and we end up in the, in the mountainous areas. That is not good. Because we still have to roll to see if we have an encounter. Remember, in a mountain... Probably this over here so you guys can see it. In the mountains, you encounter on... Uh, let's see, I think four through six. Oh, okay. We've, we've, we've got off track. We've ended up in the mountains. We're encountering something. So this is not good for us, obviously. I'm going to roll my D8 to see what it is that we encounter. One in the mountains is men. Okay, that might not actually be bad. Okay, so we're encountering men in the mountains today. This is... Hold on, we just stopped on day seven, that eight. So this was actually day nine, because we had to move in the direction. And let's see what kind of men we're encountering. Let's see, we got D12. Three. Oh, a necromant. Oh, hold on, I think there might be a mountain men. Yes, there is. Brigands. Oh, brigands are not the thing we want to really run into. We may lose some of our gear. <laughs> All right, so brigands. We're gonna go to men, or I'm sorry, we're gonna leave this open. We're gonna go to monsters and treasure. And 
For men, we have 30 to 300. There's a 15% chance that it's in their lair, so let's just check this to see if this is the brigand's place or if they're traveling through the mountains. 80, okay, so this is not their lair. They're also traveling. There's 30 to 300 of them, which is the, the overall percentile basically times. All right, so th this you can do a lot of different ways, 30 to 300, you gotta love OD&D &D how they do things. You could just roll a D10 and multiply it by 30, right? That's probably the simplest way if you're just trying to do it quickly. If you're trying to actually build out a camp for, for a longer campaign, you can roll it a lot of different ways. I'm just gonna do that because speed is what I want. Ooh, it's a lot of them and that's good for us. So eight times 30 is 240, yeah, 240 brigands. Okay, that might be, oh, well we know it's eight, so it's 80% of the number that could be there. And that actually worked for us for our evasion. So again, we're a relatively large group here. And their group is, so our group again is 10. They are over 60%. So we've got a 50% chance of evading them. They're the same speed as us. There's nothing else going on there. So let's see if we can just evade these brigands and avoid any hassle. If not, we're gonna have to retreat. Six, okay, yeah, we evade the brigands. So we can stay where we are. They're a large group, they don't see us. We just lay low, we're good to go. And that is the, day, the end of day nine. And we begin day 10, no, no longer lost. We're actually gonna uh, head this way I think because it's three moves in the mountain anyways, so it's going to be the same no matter which way we go. Although you have much worse, yeah, I, I think we've got to risk it. So we're going to move just one way this way, and we're going to roll to see if we get lost or... And we have another encounter. Fantastic. Okay, so day... Let me just cross this off here. So that was day nine, and we have an encounter in the mountains. Boy, it's dangerous uh, traipsing around out here in OD&D. &D. Four. Oh, four is lycanthropes. Four is always lycanthropes. So I'm going to roll a d4 to see what kind. Two. So werebores. Okay, so we're, we're encountering some werebores. Again, like the lycanthropes all have the same basic stats, so 15% that they're in their lair. They're not with 90 and there are between two and 20. There are nine. Okay, so just under half. And if we remember from last time, it's basically 30% to avoid them. Tw yeah. Yep, 28, we avoid the, the werebears, well, werebores rather. Whew. Okay, thankfully, all right. And that's the day and the end of the day. That was day 10. We can keep going because we don't have to rest until day 14. I want to get to this food, which is only one hex away. So we're going to roll as long as we don't get, as long as we get lost, which we don't. We move here and we're going to stop. And there I'm going to roll to try to refresh some of our food. Ugh, okay, not a very good day of, of hunting, but I did pick up uh, six more rations, which is like almost a day's worth. I think because we're so close to another place to get rations, we're just going to keep moving again. And on, okay, so we stayed there. That was day 11, so 12. We can move one more day. Yeah, let's move. Well, we're not going to use up any food while we're here. So you know what? I think I'm just going to stay here because we're going to stay and we're going to rest for two more days. We're just going to uh, get as much food as we can. So first of all, do we encounter anything? No. How much food do we get the second day? Same, six more, that's 12. Day three, no encounter. How much? We get, oh, wow, these guys are rolling terrible for me. So we get four more. So we got 16 rations. We spent, now that's that brings us to day 14. Now, here's the thing. Because we're now we've rested, we're starting a, a new, but I still need to track all these days because remember, there's other adventuring parties out there. We don't want to waste forever. So 14 days have gone by and we're going to start over. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we get lost. 
We do not. One, two, three. Let's see if we get lost. We do not. One, two, three. Let's, this is hopefully we're gonna go good here. Let's see if we get lost. Ooh, we do, okay. So we have to move one, one uh, hex in the, in the random direction. In direction number two, oh, okay. So it actually puts us here, which is a food thing. We're not gonna stay there though. And then we can turn once, so then we'll turn and we'll go one, two, three. Okay, do we get lost? Six, no, we don't get lost, but we do have an encounter. One, two, three. So I'm gonna mark that day off as well. And let's look at our encounters again in the clear. Okay. Oh, it's always a D8. A lot of these are the same, so the more you do, the more you get used to it. Like, I know lycanthropes are pretty much always fours. All right, we roll the three. Uh, in the clearing, a three is a giant. I actually did this in the mapper and I was like a giant, but actually it's a giant type. So we're actually gonna roll on this list, which is a D12, which I don't know, a giant might be better than a giant type to be honest with you. Two. Giant types, two. Goblins, oh boy. Okay, so we have encountered goblins. This could be good or bad, depending on their situation. We're gonna to go to Monsters and Treasure. Goblins and Kobolds, again, four to 400. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna roll a D10 and multiply it by, oh, actually, let me see if it's their lair, because if it's their lair, then I, really, then I do care. Oh, 50% chance they're in their lair. This is interesting. This could be good for us to come back to later if we, if we avoid it. Okay, yes, there is a goblin lair there. So let me make a note of that. So the way that I'm doing this, when I find something on the map, like a goblin lair, I am just gonna, I use my measurements, right? So it's always gonna be, let's see, that's that hex right there, which makes it 11 and two and a half. Of course, <laughs> well, I mean, I'm gonna, I am gonna know it's there, but if nobody reports it, then nobody reports it, right? Okay, so there's a goblin lair here. Because there's a goblin lair here, if we end up fighting the goblins at some point, I'll do an exact number, but for now, just for the point of evading, I'm just going to roll the same way I did before. D10 times 40. Oh, 400 goblins. So you can imagine that with 400 goblins here, we are not going to want to encounter we are not going to want to fight them if we can avoid it. So, let's see what we got for goblins. The, or evasion rather. So they are over 60%. Again, we're still a relatively large group, so we still only have a 50% chance to evade them. We are not twice as fast as them. We're basically the same speed. No, that's not true. Goblins are, move only six inches. And now while we do move slow because we're armored, I'm gonna, uh, outside, that doesn't really affect you so much. That's really dungeon movement in the way I use it. So I'm gonna say we're faster than the goblins are by double. So we're actually gonna get 25% on that. So we have a 75% chance just to get away from these goblins and come back to them another day. And of course we rolled a 90. So we do not evade the goblins. They see us, we must run or fight, but obviously we're not gonna fight for the goblins. So we're gonna run in a random direction, two. Oh man, we're always running in two. This is not good. Okay, so we run into the mountains, which is a terrible place to run. We're faster than them, so they won't follow us, but that does eat another day. And now we have to start this next day in the mountains. And again, even if we go back to that hex again, as long as we don't uh, stop there, we won't necessarily encounter them again. So I'm gonna roll now again in the mountains. Five. Oh, oh man, we got an encounter. Okay, so we're gonna uh, encounter the have the encounter in the mountains first, and then we will... Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're gonna have to do that anyways, because basically we have to stay where we were to stay put the first day because we have to rest for half a day after we've run. I don't know if I did that the last time. I think I rested anyways, so it didn't matter. So we're having an encounter in the mountains. 
<laughs> this is a this is tough with the map so far away. We're having an encounter in the mountains. It is going to be a D8. I mean, we've been very lucky with our avoiding. Ooh, eight is a dragon. Well, a dragon type. It's not a dragon necessarily. Dragon type. We're going to roll. Well, this could be the end of this party if there's an actual dragon here. Six. A gold dragon. Oh, that's actually very good. So a gold dragon, of course, is a lawful dragon. So, you know, again, if I was playing this out, if I was actually playing the game, what I would do is, you know, have it possibly be in the shape of a human, have it be whatever, have some kind of role play with it. But since we're just doing this systematically, I'm going to say gold dragons are good and they're not going to try to kill us. But what they might do is make us swear in an alliance to defeat those dragon, the, the goblins. The gold dragon is going to say that they want the goblins gone. They're seeing an, an incursion of goblins here. And the party is going to say that they will come back with in force at some point. Oh, actually, before I do that, I need to see if it's the dragon's lair or not, because why would it care about those? Let me actually rethink that for a second. Dragons have a 60% chance of being in their lair. So if it's not its lair, it probably won't care. I mean, it cares, but 91. Wow, that die rolls a lot of nines. Okay, so let's let's scratch that. What does the dragon want? So the dragon's going to want something, but they're a first level party. They're not very powerful. I don't see the dragon kind of forcing the point of them to do anything. Perhaps the dragon wants a tribute when they return. So let's say that. And what we're going to do is that dragon is in... Well, it's going to seek them out. We'll, 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 we'll deal with that. Basically, what we're going to do is, if the, the dragon, because the dragon is going to help them, it's going to want a tribute. And what it's going to do is it's going to get them through the mountains to this side. We'll say that seems like a fair trade. So that's where we're at now. We're going to start off in this plane over here. And of course, they're going to take that path. And they're going to try to get to their map now, having just made a deal with the dragon being lawful. This is the advantage of being lawful, I guess, right? All right, so we're back in the, the thing. It is, uh, oh, actually that was six days of travel, so they got a rest today. So let's see if they encounter anything in the, in the plane where they're resting. They do not, okay. All right, so we're starting again. I'm gonna have to check their food in a second, but I think they're gonna have to go camping here. Okay, no encounter. One, two, three. They're going to stop there and they're going to hunt. So let's push this all out of here. Getting a little messy with the dice again. So they're going to hunt here because they really, they're, they're running low on food. There we go. All right. So they got 14 more rations. So they picked up 30 additional rations. They've been traveling for a total of, they're just about out of their food, I think. 15. Yeah, they're basically 5, 10, 15, 20, 2. So they're actually three weeks out. So they're, they're completely out of the food they brought with them. And they basically have just 30 rations left. And there's, there's basically eight of them. We're assuming the mules are just eating whatever they're eating. So they've got like about four days worth of rations. So, you know, with the 30 rations they have. So... They're going to actually try to stop at each one of these things and get rations as they go. Because again, three more moves is going to put them there. So let's see if they get lost. I mean, they're on the path. I can't imagine, but you never do know. One, two, three. They're not quite there yet. So they have to use it. So that's one day of travel. And they're going to stop at the next one. So let's see if they encounter anything. They do not. Okay, they're going to stop here. And they're going to try to roll some more rations. Oof, okay, six, so that's 12. All right. Uh, again, they're just going to keep moving because they don't want to be delayed if they can avoid it. They've only been moving two days so far. Okay, they're going to get lost. Somehow they, they, lose, they lose their way on the path. So rolling to see what direction they go in, four. All right, so they go into the forest, which costs them two, and then they can recover and come back out. And actually, because they were lost and because... Yeah, now they're just going to do that. So they're good there. And then we're going to do... That was, that was that day. 
Next day, they don't get lost. One, two, three. Okay, they ended on the food again. Ah, that's what we want. Okay, so that's 22. That's a good amount of food. Let's see if they can keep going. I'm gonna try to get them to the place and then we'll probably stop there. One, they got lost, of course, after I just said that. Uh, they move in six. Oh, six isn't bad. One, two, three. Uh, okay, I think they can travel two more days, so they might just get there. Six. Oh, okay, they they hit an encounter. All right, they're they're encountering something in the in the uh, the plains. It's a seven. Oh, animals. Oh, this might actually be good because if it's an animal that's like possibly huntable, then we might. Because it could be like giant animals. Here we go. Basic animals. Oh no, these are like full on <laughs> monsters. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. We got a D12. This could be a fight. One. Oh no, spiders. All right. Giant spiders. Ba ba da ba. Anybody who knows me knows that giant spiders are one of my favorite bad guy monsters. Okay, so let's take a look here. Now, OD&D is quite vague on the animals. I just don't know if they list the numbers. Large insects are animals, 2 to 16. Again, the party's still going to try to avoid it if they can. It doesn't make sense not to avoid them, but they'll melee if they can't. So 2 to 16 means 2d8. That is 8. 9. Okay. So that's basically just a little over half, which as we know, based on everything we've done before, basically that means they have a 30% chance to just straight up avoid these giant spiders. And if they do not, then we're gonna fight. 36, oh 63 rather. They do not avoid them. I think they're gonna fight them. It's risky, but yeah, we're gonna do it. All right, the party's about to go into combat with nine giant spiders, and I think that's where we're gonna leave it because I'm gonna have to change up the whole board to do it.